It's another beautiful day into the evening here at Miller Park in Milwaukee. They've closed the roof on us again, but out in the parking lot, they love their tailgating. They love their brats. It's what Wisconsin outdoor cooking is all about here at the ballpark. Bob and FP, magic number 15. Brewers two and a half out in the wild card race. A lot at stake this weekend. And the month of August comes to a close in a solid month it was. Yeah, 18 wins in a month the most since May of 2015. The Nats have had 11 consecutive winning months. How about that? Trey Turner is going to lead them to a winning September, we think. Everything, his entire skill set on display here last night. Well, it just goes to show you the value of speed. I mean, it's so nice to see Trey back. He's played gold glove quality defense at shortstop. But the value of speed to this ball club it makes pitchers think about him on first base it makes him speed up their delivery so say you're a one three to the plate now you got Trey Turner on first base and you're trying to compensate for that and you rush your pitches next thing you know you're 2 0 to the next hitter you groove one so everybody benefiting from Trey's speed the guys hitting behind him Trey at the top of the order he's almost more valuable when he hits singles versus the extra base hits because he really affects the game when he's standing on first base so look at Trey Turner over the last two years or so so 144 games over 310 on base percentage extra base hits runs and of course the steals four for 11 with a couple of steals and three runs scored since he came back. So now we embark on September. The rosters expand a bit. Ryan Madsen's going to rejoin the ball club in the bullpen. A third catcher Rowdy Reed is here. So it's kind of an interesting time of the year when the playing of the games changes a bit. Well it gives a manager a lot more weapons at his disposal on the bench so we're happy to get Ryan Madsen back you know Tanner Roark now has got a six inning game he goes six innings he's got seven eight nine taken care of and Tanner pretty good at just that he has one two straight he's five and two since the break seven of nine on the road remember when we talked about what a good second half guy he is he's looking for number 12 tonight and he's a guy from the upper Midwest he's three and oh career five games four starts against Milwaukee. Hammer and Hank, Henry Aaron. Miller Park, Milwaukee, immortalized forever in this town after most of his big league career was spent here. And at the home of the Brewers, where they're 37 and 31, the Nats bring their 41 and 25 road record. So roster moves Austin Adams, Eric Fetty recalled from Syracuse to bolster the bullpen even more. Ryan Matson is back, and he Romero is back. They're from the DL. And of course, Rowdy Reed, young catcher with pop. He's good defensively. Had a good season at Double A Harrisburg. 
and he's part of the ball club and there he is right there and you were watching him do some things in BP today. Well he's got some pop but get this Reed has never attended a major league baseball game before tonight's his first sitting on a major league bench. How about that. That's crazy. That is absolutely amazing. So tonight it might be Tanner Roark's curveball against the heat of Jimmy Nelson who strikes out a lot of guys. Yeah Tanner Roark's curveball has been money for him 189 average against so Tanner Roark doing well right he's have just a 188 on base percentage off of Tanner Roark over the last month. Last time the Nats faced Jimmy Nelson he was cruising for a while he went seven plus but the start of the eighth inning was a big problem for him. Daniel Murphy went deep with a home run got the Nats on their way and they would score seven the following inning to win a ball game. Baseball on Masson brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by the Lexus RX featuring a pre collision system with pedestrian detection standard. A lot to do on the big concourses in Miller Park. Great food, team stores, third base dugout filled with nets now. A few more of them here in the month of September. It's going to be game number 134 for Washington tonight. Here's the lineup Trey Turner since his return from injury four for 11 two walks two steals three runs igniting some offense Wilmer's behind him tonight Anthony Rendon one for ten career against Jimmy Nelson he has the night off good looking lineup Jose Lobatone in for Matt Wieters Jimmy Nelson 103 strikeouts with his heater so far this year. Well, there you see the arsenal fastball 62 percent of the time slider 17 curveball 19 rarely throws the changeup. Last starts was Sunday in Los Angeles 3 2 winner went six and two thirds just gave up a couple of runs against the Dodgers in a hundred and two pitch effort. Well, the defense for the Brewers in their traditional unis tonight I like it Ron VR Santana the outfield Arcia Shaw left side so guard Walker right side Stephen Vogt behind the plate. Here's your Coons dot com scouting report 500 club opponents are hitting 500 with runners in scoring position over the last month against Jimmy 17 for 34 and Jimmy two times he likes the curveball number two he throws it on the first pitch 39 percent of the time over the last month. That's the most in Major League Baseball on the first pitch. When you're talking cars you're talking Coons your Coons dot com scouting report. Yeah really interesting get him in the stretch position and see what happens. 
Nelson 31 and 44 career. This will be the fifth time he has faced the Nats one and one with a 443 eight year umpire Mark Ripperger has the plate Phil Cuzzy at first Vic Carapaz is second base and good to see Tom Hallion back in there he took a real shot to the mask last night. That's a great veteran crew chief in his 28th year. We're glad he's working this evening. Trey Turner first career at bat against Jimmy Nelson. It is 7 10 in the Midwest and we're underway with a ground ball up the middle. Arcia knows he can't lay back too long and it's one out on one pitch. Well let's just watch Trey run because it's fun. Bang bang got to hurry. Next up is Wilmer Defoe. Tough way to get your hitting streak interrupted. When you come in to pinch hit last night he struck out. Ending his eight game streak but. We'll tell you that in eight of his last nine games he's 13 for 34. And getting a third base assignment tonight. Drills one right at Arcia. Three pitches, two outs. So the Nats really pounding the Central. You would think the record might be better than 16 and 11, but they are hitting Central pitchers hard. Jimmy Nelson, there's the stat on his strikeouts: 103 of his 181. Tanner Roark, five and two last eight starts, and everybody hitting under 200 against him. Nelson by the way fifth overall in strikeouts in the National League and the number three hitter Daniel Murphy. See the yellow sweatbands the umpires and players will be wearing today it's childhood cancer awareness day. In Major League Baseball so. The yellow symbolize in that. In case you're wondering. Very cool. Second annual. And Murphy will get one just over the reach of Eric Sogard for his 146th hit of the year. And Murphy adds to his 345 road batting average. There goes. The no hitter from Daniel Hits Murphy, who seems to break him up all the time. Perfectly placed. Lob shot over the net for the Nats' first hit. There goes the no hitter. All right. There it is. Now throw it away. Only use that sign once. That's it. <laughs> I like it. Thanks. It's cool. Zimmerman. Ball in the dirt. Just a quick note September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And if you don't know it, every day 42 families in the United States receive the devastating news that their child or teen has cancer. Major League Baseball doing what they can to help as we get this very important month underway. A lot of room up the middle to the left of second base, and that's that. 94 heater in there. Counts 1 1. So Daniel Murphy now 4 for 9 against Nelson. Zimmerman 0 for 3 career. Breaking ball in the dirt off the catcher and down to second, Daniel Murphy. Well, that changes the nature of the at bat for Ryan. He's thinking I need to hit a gap to score Murph from first or maybe score myself from home and hit one over the fence. Now a single will do it. Behind in the count, one and two. Tried to backhand pick that, hit him in the chest, and Murph gets a free 90 feet. So 
Strike two in a wild pitch. Zimmerman 88 RBIs. And can't reach that one that's away. Murphy keeps it from being a really quick first inning. The Nats strand their first runner. There they go. And that's only six of the up to 11 relievers the Nats could have available tonight. The Brewers have a 12 man bullpen. So September baseball, here we go. Milwaukee 10th in the league in hitting, ninth in runs, third in homers. Eric Sogard. When he leads off an inning, he gets on base a lot. He's played 70 games this year. And you see Neil Walker right behind him, Ryan Braun, Travis Shaw we didn't see last night, and we were so impressed with that young third baseman in the series in D.C. So Tanner Roark, five games, four starts against Milwaukee, 3-0. and There's the arsenal, the average velocity of all of his pitches, two-seam, four-seam, the fastball. He throws it 57% of the time. Slider, 17, curve, 15, change up 12%. Five to four, loss last start against the Mets. Gave up three runs on five hits over six, but struck out nine Mets and didn't walk one. Longtime Oakland Athletic Eric Sogard. Brewers signed him to a one year free agent deal, middle of December. And 291 in 70 games. Defoe shallow at third. Good pitch, low in the zone, 1 1. On a pitch up, he pulls it. It's hooking. And just, just foul. Did Worth catch that in a fly off the upper deck? Or on the fly? Holding it up as if to claim a catch. Time for your Coons.com scout report. Right handed hitters have a 188 on base percentage against Tanner over the last month. That's why you see 188, 152. Right handed hitters are hitting that 152 against Tanner Roark over the last month. 10 for their last 66. Wow. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. And a check swing to the Nats dugout. Eric Sogard, 248 career hitter. Was in the minor leagues all of last year. Had a neck strain, then he had knee surgery. 330 at Colorado Springs this year, and the Brewers brought him back to the big leagues, and that's going to take him back to the dugout. Tanner Roark paint away for the first out. 87 of Tanner's 135 strikeouts against lefties since the beginning of last year have been on the pitch you just saw the fastball. So when he wants to strike out a lefty, he goes to the heat. Usually it's the front hip. That was a great frame by Jose Lobatone to get the call third. Neil Walker 
Hit 264 for the Mets in 73 games. Traded over here August 12th. Outside. Digging the Paul Molitor unis tonight, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I see those, and I think of 1982 and Harvey's wall bangers that went to the World Series. I like the glove. It's an M and a B on the left shoulder for Milwaukee Brewers, but it's a it's a glove. And people don't know the old Expos logo on the hat is Montreal Expos baseball. But you see the M and the B in the glove. Same kind of thing with the Expos old logo. Nice. Two one. On a pitch up, Walker a high fly to right, and the Brewers on top, and that's way up into the mezzanine. I'll tell you what, huge crowd here tonight. And they got something to cheer about right out of the gate. Curveball from Tanner. Opponents hitting 189 on that pitch. That one kind of stayed up and out over the plate. Neil Walker caught it out front and hit it far. Almost to the top of the second deck. That's his 12th of the year. Second is a Brewer. And here's Ryan Braun. 415 feet. That's their 193rd homer. One behind the Cubs and the Mets coming into the day. And that's a check swing. And a foul. Well, generally speaking, this place where it has a big crowd and the roof is closed, it gets warm in here. And when it gets warm, the ball flies, even if it's cool outside. Big crowd heating it up. And it looks like one of those nights where the ball is going to fly. Yeah, 64 degrees outside, but about at least 10 degrees warmer than that in here. Roark with a good heater. Miller Park holds 41,600. A lot of red. See all the red? Cats fans all over the place made the trip up for the weekend. Nice. On the edge. Braun doesn't like it. Two strikeouts for Tanner Roark, both looking. Early returns. Tanner's hitting his spots, and Mark Ripperger is buying Jose Lobatone's framing skills. That's twice that he's made. The pitch on the black looked like more of a strike than it really was. So keep an eye on that. Here's the defense for the Nats tonight. Kendrick Taylor worth your outfield. Turner Defoe left side. Murphy Zerman right side. Jose Lobatone behind the plate. Jose catch it tonight because Matt Weeders had the foul tip off his knee last night. So he's dinged up. He can't call Severino back for about four more days because he was sent down. You have to send him down for 10 days. And that's why I see Rowdy on the bench checking out his first ever major league game. And he was launching the helmet on. He was launching some bombs in BP today. Travis Shaw had a homer, actually two homers, four RBIs, and four walks against the Nats in the series in our ballpark late July. 27 year old infielder obtained from the Red Sox in a deal for their reliever, former Milwaukee closer Tyler Thornburg. Last December, and this kid's really been something. 27 and 83, the power numbers, and he has 29 doubles. Sees Roark for the first time. And this one high in the air out to center for Taylor. That's it for the bottom of the first. Neil Walker hits a long homer. Howie Kendricks hits some long ones for the Nats. He is straight ahead in a 1 0 game.
But it's all you need to know is the Dodgers are coming to town. Check out the times, mark it down, buy tickets. This is the marquee matchup of the year in September for baseball. Everybody going to be talking about it. So go to nationals.com tickets for more details. The Dodgers have lost five in a row. They're done. They're never winning again. And the Nats are going to have the best record in the National League going to the playoffs. It's done. They're over. They're spent. So Neil Walker's gone deep and here's Howie Kendrick one for four against Jimmy Nelson. Strike one inside the numbers brought to you by Jeep. August very very good to him and vice versa him to our ball club. Great numbers. A walk off grand slam. Numerous clutch hits. And the, and the count 0 2 is Nelson dropped the breaking ball there. Chico Escuela. Skid on Saturday Night Live. August been very, very good to me. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> that is beyond the reach of Neil Walker. Jimmy Nelson left a front door breaking ball up, and Howie just took an inside out to the right side. The Nats have their second hit. I mean, he always keeps his hands close to his body. He's hard to get in on. But then when you hang something like this instead of rolling it over to shortstop like a lot of guys because his hands are close to his body he's thinking the other way this is the result. When we say hands inside the baseball it's a perfect example nice swing. Jason Worth hit second last night. Kind of an odd night 0 for 4 on grounders but two of them produced runs batted in. Nice career numbers against the Milwaukee ball club. Yeah, Howie Kendrick with 10 stolen base. Remember, Stephen Vogt has trouble throwing, so don't be surprised if he steals here sometime soon. Vogt as a Brewer, 0 for 12. Overall, counting his time in Oakland, 2 for 51. Yeah. Just outside the bank. Run till they tag you. 2 for 51. A lot of times you say, well, it's the pitcher's fault, but when it gets to something like that, it. it yeah, there's more going on. There's more going on than the pitcher. This might be one of those where Davy Lope says, Why "What are you still here? doing here?" <laughs> How he started and then stopped, and then worth pulling off the breaking pitch. It goes to one. And two tried to Nelson too fast to the plate. You know I get that a lot. It's usually when I go over to people's houses. They say that. Why are you me. still here. Why are you still here. Second strikeout by Nelson. Throwing a lot of. Breaking pitches early here. Mercedes Benz on the pitch cast. Jason looking fastball here way out in front you see his front shoulder front hip flying out of there he was geared up for the heater. Michael A. Taylor. One hit one RBI against Nelson. That cast is powered by AWS. 10 foot lead, not real big. Ooh. He had a bit of a lean towards second and just got back. Ooh. That was close. Craig Council turned around. I think he might be on the horn down there. Let's look at it again. He had a more than a lean, he had a false step going and just gets his hand back. Yeah. And Milwaukee dugout says play on. So that throw over there was a couple of things. 
maybe to pick him off, but if, if he jelly legged again, then Craig Council probably would have pitched out even in a 1 0 count. But he got back easily. Looks like he's going. Huh? Trying to time it. <laughs> yeah, how he kind of looking sideways over there. <laughs> he's trying to figure you out, man. Trying to get worn out by Davy Lopes. Runner holding, and that's up and in. Two and one. Michael A, two RBI short of 40. Trying to time it. Look at him. Can't time it. He held him. That's why the hold is so effective against base dealers. Max Scherzer does it. Jimmy Nelson doing it right now. That's such a great shot, you guys, of it, through the pitcher to the base runner, and you're seeing Howie Kendrick trying to time him. And, and if he gets that momentum going, when Nelson picks up his foot, he just rolls. But he can't get it right because Nelson's holding it. So watch. He's trying to go. Everybody knows he's trying to go, but he's trying to time the foot and his break at the same time. He was going again. You see the, the hesitation going back? Good stuff. This is a great angle. Davy Lopes with the stopwatch, time and Nelson to the plate. So it's two and two. There he goes. Pitches up and away, and so's the throw. And then it had very little on it off the glove of Sogard. Bad, bad looking throw, and that may be a clue to that stat we talked about earlier. I know Kendrick at third with one out. Didn't get a great jump, but didn't need one. You see him looking back, and Vogt just throws a grenade into center field. No chance. Good read by Howie Kendrick rolling his head. Yeah, there's nothing Sogar could do with that. And now Michael A. Taylor trying to put the ball in play, and Craig Council bringing his infield in. Look at this in the second. 3 2. Taylor a swing and a miss. Ball's on the ground. So he'll have to run it out. Staying at third Kendrick. Two down. All that diving back to first. Stole second. Had to pop up. He's gassed at third. Up to Jose Lobatone, the number eight hitter here. Lobatone has a career hit and an RBI against Jimmy Nelson, who slides in the 85 for a strike. Classic National League situation where there's a base open, runner in scoring position, two outs. Number eight hitter, but Jose hitting a buck 56, and the Brewers are going after him. Fastball up. Maybe now they get a little more careful behind in the count. Tanner Roark can swing it. Four hits on the year. He's on deck. Late for a fastball. Unfortunately, the bat boy over there didn't get that one. It went right by him and hit the padding. A 
Nats down by a run. Lobaton has driven in nine this year. You know, this trip isn't official to eat a brat. Did you eat one yet? <laughs> No, but I had a Milwaukee special hot dog yesterday with the secret stadium sauce. All right. That counts. That counts. He made an offer. No swing, says Tom Hallion. And the count goes full to Lobaton. I mean, if you're Jose right here, strike near strike. You're, you're looking for a fastball, but you're thinking, what would I do as a catcher? Base open. Pitcher on deck. Would I throw me a strike right here? Howie Kendrick on red alert for a curveball in the dirt. 3 2. Good at bat by Jose Lobatone. He's aboard. First and third, two outs. And even if the game doesn't get tied here, that at bat cost Jimmy Nelson a lot of bullets early in the game. I think he wanted that last pitch. He was frustrated by the call. Looked the way to me. In the interesting slash unusual stat of the night, Tanner Roark has faced Jimmy Nelson twice, and he's been walked both times. So why not ball one? Might be the best pitch he gets to hit right here. Let's see if be he's ripping. Yeah. And Roark high in the air, shallow left center. Arcia out, Braun in, and the left fielder takes it. Nats have stranded three early, one nothing, Milwaukee. Is it Australian Terrier? Is it a bearded collie? Is it a Boston Terrier? I don't know. I'll let you know on TV if you bring your dog to the ballpark on September 7th. And that's take on the Phillies, 705 start. Proceeds from pups tickets benefit the Humane Rescue Alliance. That is great. To purchase, visit nationals.com slash special ticket. Did you see where the Scherzers are covering all the adoption fees? Isn't that great for Max and Erica yes. to do that? So there's room for all the dogs that are coming from Houston into the D.C. Humane Society. I think that is spectacular. Absolutely. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Erica. Inside the numbers brought to you by G. So the Nats, nine over in April, five over May, 500 in June. Pretty good July. Not that many games because of the All-Star break. Seven over in August, 29 over here on the 1st of 
September. Domingo Santana the hitter. That 18 wins in a month is the most since May of 2015. And is the 11th consecutive winning month since the start of 2016. 11 consecutive winning months. Is that good? Slider down and away. Santana, 274. Four for his last 11 with a home run. They've got some bats that have been making some noise. Brewers have had kind of an unusual power outage from a home run standpoint since the All Star break. They were hitting 1.52 homers a game into the break, 1.26 out of the break, the biggest reduction in the National League. But they're still going to have 200 here in the next four or five days. Eric Thames, we haven't seen him yet this series. Thames has 28 to lead them by one over Travis Shaw. And this inside out ground ball goes right to Ryan Zimmerman. Steven Vogt and Jonathan V are the next two for the Brewers. See people way up high in the rafters. Rarely do we see fans up there here. I was talking to some of the coaches and some of the players today for the Nats and they were saying how dark it is in here. I if you look at the lights over the Brewers dugout and over their dugout under the retractable roof they were saying that those lights are dim and they're almost in fair territory. So you don't benefit from the lights. Even the umpires last night commented how dark it is in here. I mean it looks good on TV but if you look out there Carp this is one of the darker fields. I agree with you. as far as the lighting goes that we've seen and it, when they close the roof just a few minutes before game time it's a totally different feel sight and atmosphere in the entire yard. I don't know what the Brewers criterion is for closing the roof 64 yep. degrees at game time outside those lights they're usually further back and then you get the full effect but they're kind of hovering over the grass and the dugouts. Right field Murphy. Couple of ground ball outs for Tanner Roark. Watch all the pennant races with MLD bot TV every night on every device. Watch every out of market game live. Plus get a free subscription to App Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. That's MLB.tv for details. Jonathan VR it's warming it up here hitting 238 but he's seven for his last 12. And he's done something the last two games before this that I thought was very unusual. Wednesday hitting left handed he hit an opposite field homer last night hitting right handed. He hit an opposite field homer against Geo in the fifth inning. Big blow of the game that really gave Milwaukee the big lead that they never Relinquished. Great Council's ball club lost a half game to the Cubs, who won again today. So they're four back in the central. But very much in the wild card. Rockies are scuffling. Colorado now three and a half games behind Arizona, and they're allowing Milwaukee and St. Louis to hang around in the wild card. Did you hear what the Cubs did to the Brewers today again. To the Brewers. Yeah. OK. So they had the rain out with no rain earlier in the season right. Craig Council saying I've never had sunburned players in a rain out before. <laughs> they changed a day game on a Friday to a night game at Wrigley Field coming up here against the Brewers because they get in late from Pittsburgh. Hmm. So you know we played the Cubs it's always a Friday day game right always two o'clock start one o'clock start whatever it is. So the mayor of Chicago came out and said yeah the Cubs need more rest they're getting in late at night so we changed it to a night game because you know they have that restriction as far as many night games you can have in Wrigleyville right so they lifted it. I was talking to Craig Council about it today he was laughing. It's like, what Tanner Roark paints again all three of his strikeouts have been taken top of the order Trey Turner that's now by just one he is having so much fun now that he's back and we are having a blast watching him
International, providing... In I am not messing with those two dudes, sorry. Providing innovative, high-value dental and vision benefits to area employers and individuals. Smile, it's Friday, and I can't stop my hands. They won't stop. Uh, how about a selfie? Perfect, nailed it. Nicely done. One pitch, one grounder for Trey Turner, first inning to start the game. We were talking about Trey at the beginning of the broadcast tonight and how he changes a game. You know, you get pitchers when he's on first that are a one three, one three and a half to the plate, maybe a one four, their, their, their break time. And now they try to speed the game up to keep him close. And you're changing your delivery. And you're changing your mindset and you're rushing the ball to the plate. And a lot of times you're 2 0 to the next guy. And you just lay one in there. And everybody else benefits. Watch your wrist. That was close. You see him kind of pull his hand in there too. He probably had a flashback. 3 and 0. Oh. And the point I was trying to make, Carp, is that he's more effective on first base than he is when he hits a double or a triple. Yeah, it's fun to watch yeah. him score runs. That's the name of the game as a leadoff hitter. But right now, the dynamic of the game has just changed because Jimmy Nelson knows he has the fastest base runner in baseball on first, and it's going to change his mindset and his approach to Wilmer Defoe here hitting. Yeah, we've already documented the problems of Steven Vogt throwing out runners. So yeah. I mean, something's he, about to happen, you would think, pretty quickly. Yeah, he might be on third and two pitches. Wilmer Defoe hit the ball really hard, lined out to Arcia, the shortstop, first time. Turner holding. Wilmer showed bunt. Trying to time him up just like Howie Kendrick was. Took Howie a while and then he got it done. That's next steal. Turner has 37 of them. 37 of them would be number 90. Look where his eyes are. They're looking down low at his feet. So he's looking down this way. At his feet. And as soon as it goes, there he goes. Pitches up, throw is off to the side, and Trey Turner has 38, and the Nats make it to 90. Well, he's a walking double and possibly a triple. Stay on the base. Good jump. Steven Vogt now two for 53. Throwing runners out. He had uh, Johnny Bench didn't have a chance on that one. As the ball gets away, Turner didn't need much of a secondary lead. The pitch was a strike on a swing by Defoe, and Turner's at third with nobody out. So I was wrong. He's on third and three pitches, not two. My bad on that call. Tough to see. Sees it trickle away right there and takes off a little bit late, but he saw it kind of trickling, trickling, and go. So it was a breaking ball down and in where Defoe couldn't stop his swing. It did hit the glove of Vote. And it's called a wild. Now they're going to say pass ball. They said wild pitch and changed it real quick. One and two. Pass ball up. He's the most impactful player. On the Nats, no doubt about it. I mean, on a team when there's MVPs and batting title, potential batting title winners, and all kinds of different accolades going on, on the offense, I think he's the most impactful player. 2 2. Turner now three steals since his return three walks and he has scored three runs 
Defoe it's close and it's ball four. Two consecutive walks with some big guns coming up. Because you can pitch around Bryce. You can pitch around Zim. You can pitch around Murph if you want. You can't pitch around Trey Turner. You have to get him out because if he steals first base, he's stealing second, he's scored on a base hit, he's possibly stealing third. The contact play, he's going to score on a ground ball to anybody in the infield. So there's ways to avoid the the other weapons in the Nats lineup. You can't avoid Trey Turner. The only way you have to avoid him is going head on and try to get him out. Daniel Murphy, great chance to get that RBI total beyond 84. And Stephen Vogt took that foul ball. Having a rough night. Check this out. Last two years. So 144 games. 110 runs, 70 stolen bases, 62 extra base hits, 350 on base percentage, and a big high five from the Nat shortstop. <laughs> And when he really learns how to bunt, he's going to hit 350. Murphy already has one hit tonight. Daniel has 41 multi hit games. I don't think they throw through here if Defoe goes. I think it's a free stolen base if he wants it. I mean Turner would score easily by the time votes throw got to second base and then returned. Oh Murphy swinging on a pitch up. So the count is 0 2. More numbers from G. So with runners in scoring position. It is Daniel Murphy. Not only leading the National League Justin Upton now an angel 383 to lead the American League. Nobody even close to this guy. Hitting around 350 on the road after his base hit tonight. Defoe holding Murphy fouls. So for the Brewers standing out in the field here a long tedious inning already and nobody out. Target is up. And Murphy couldn't get up to get it. Fourth strikeout by Jimmy Nelson. Tried to get on top, just too high. Seeing Daniel expand the zone a little bit lately, and that just tells me that maybe mentally. He's fatigued more than physically. That'll happen this time of year to players. Now we'll see if Wilmer Depot inclined to run again to get that double play out of order. As Ryan tries to elevate something to at least tie the game. I mean, the play here for the Brewers is a big old arm fake from Stephen Vogt if Defoe goes and then see if Turner's going to come down the line and you might have him. I mean that's the only play that they could possibly think of right here unless you just eat it and let Wilmer steal second. Ryan Zimmerman hit by that pitch. Bases loaded without a hit. That's the not funny bone, I think. It's the worst. 
See where it got him. I think it was elbow, wasn't it? Ugh. Tricep. Boo. Mm -hmm. He's saying that's a good one to Neil Walker right now, meaning that hurt. Howie Kendrick has a base hit. Big spot for him. Slider for a strike. Maybe there was some funny bone involved. Ugh. Make it queasy. O2 target away. Trusting his catcher, he throws the breaking ball in the dirt. Lots Turner walked, leading off. Defoe walked after one out. Zimmerman hit by the pitch. Yeah, lots of traffic. Kendrick called out. Two down. Pretty good pitch. Got a little slider there. At 90. Jason Worth going to try to pick up a few teammates here with two outs. Worth struck out swinging first time. Into the 8 o'clock hour here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Season series even between the two. Two and two. It's Tanner Roark and Jimmy Nelson and on the Neil Walker first inning homer. Drew Crew on top. Way outside that fastball required a really quick reach by Stephen Vogt. Yeah, to the backhand, Jason Worth doing a nice job of directing traffic. That's one is a runner on third. Sometimes you lose sight of. So Jason finding the ball and telling Trey stay right there. I'll tell you what, to this point, Jimmy Nelson has made some really good pitches in this situation. Painting, if you will. Out of play, now the count's 2 2. Crowd's about to go nuts, you feel like. Three and two with the bases loaded. Crank them up. Start your engines. Best play in baseball coming.
Nasty slider. Jason Worth talking with Mark Ripperger, claiming he might have foul tipped it. Inning appears to be over, and the Nats have stranded six. Get a high five. Thank you. And I think that kid's name is Cy Young, if I'm not mistaken. Celebrate the start of the new school year with 50% off tickets, Nats Brave Series. That's September 12th through the 14th at Nats Park. Simply visit nationals.com slash tickets and use promo code SCHOOL to get your 50% off. Some restrictions do apply. Tanner Roark back to work. He's been sitting for a long time waiting to face. Eight, nine, and one. Arcia. Shallow fly ball to left. Howie Kendrick in to grab it. So 31 pitches for Tanner. 21 strikes. And he's retired six in a row since the Neil Walker home run. Jimmy Nelson next against him. Nats have been so good at picking up everybody all year. Runners on third less than two. That that last inning seemed weird, didn't it? Well all we hear about is this guy's fastball his slider has been his best pitch tonight guys keep looking for heaters and he's not giving it to well them. the guts that it took to throw it three two at the bases loaded two outs yeah. Jason Worth wasn't expecting it we weren't expecting it but you know we're so conditioned to see this ball club pick up runners and to see three real good hitters strike out was weird and that's have been around 300 as a team with runners in scoring position the entire season. Jimmy Nelson 0 for 1 against Tanner Roark. Jimmy Nelson 0 for 2 against Tanner Roark. And their strikeout number four. First time around, they go 1 for 9. All right, Washington area Toyota dealers help children and their families by making a $37 donation to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by Nats pitcher this season. And by the way, just a quick follow up to our Childhood Cancer Awareness Day conversation of a couple of innings ago. Major League Baseball teaming up, and you can contribute. By going to standuptocancer.org. Ryan's got the yellow ribbon for our young ones who need our help. Top of the order, Eric Sogard called that on strikes first time up. Tanner Roar continues to perfectly place that heater.
ninety three crackling in for strike two. Tanner's looking like Tanner. That he has for a while now. Fastball command. He's working ahead in the count, hitting his spots and location. Slowed everything down. His delivery, his tempo. And the tempo is not slow. It was just real fast. And then when you're thinking and pitching and you're worried about this and frustrated because of that, you have a tendency to kind of work fast. And then you, your delivery starts becoming fast and your release points inconsistent. Now he's much more relaxed, taking deep breaths. Slow the delivery down, slow the tempo down, and back to the Tanner Roark that we've been spoiled with the last couple of years. One and two. Sogard stepping out. See, even just a little turn at the beginning of the delivery, it's so slow. There's a pause, then there's the leg kick. He's not rolling right through it. He's gathering himself, kind of staying over the rubber, keeping his head back. Balance point, the delivery, everything's very calm and very under control. Watch the first step right here. Slow and go. Turned one over nicely. Zimmerman to Roark. And a one, two, three, eight in a row. Since the Walker Homer in the fourth inning of Nationals Baseball, brought to you by the all wheel drive RAV4 Toyota. What drives you? Visit buyatoyota.com for great deals. Don't go that fast, but the fourth inning coming up real quickly. First inning homer. Next five for the Nats. Max tomorrow and Brandon Woodruff. It's at seven o'clock a little earlier. Look at WUSA nine hopping aboard for the next three. Edwin Jackson, Matt Garza on Sunday. Sometimes when we're in baseball, we forget about holidays. Monday, Labor Day, Tuesday and Wednesday, all night games in Miami. And folks, the fourth inning couldn't come around quickly enough for me. We had Masson Booth karaoke during the break with FP singing Tony Orlando's classic about the yellow ribbon celebrating and trying to make successful a childhood cancer awareness day. Well, uh, well done. You, you knew all the lyrics. He's playing in our headphones. Singing along. Tony Orlando and Don. Don't this, forget Don. This inning started just in time. One one to Michael A. Shows bunt fights it off. Digging for first and out by a step. A little more line, that's a base hit. Too close to Jimmy Nelson, he had time. That's got to be a little interesting when you're squaring to bunt and a pitch starts coming in at you. A lot of pitchers do that on purpose. It's like a reflex. They like to throw it up and in when you square around. Properly kept Michael A from a base hit by doing that. 
So here's Lobatone followed by Roark here in the top of the fourth. Slider has been filthy. Mercedes Benz on the pitch cast. Yeah, it's short and late, which means it's tough to pick up. Lobatone might have broken his bat, and no way for Shaw to reach it. Like. Travis Shaw had a chance to make the highlight reels on that one, didn't he? I don't know if he's dinged up or not, but watch this. If he lays out here, he has a chance to be on all kinds of highlight reels, doesn't he? Kind of pulled up on it. It was dropped right in front of him. Hmm. One and two to Lobatone. Fastball at the letters, he can only walk away. Strikeout number seven. He has 11 outs and seven on strikes. We're going to check in on Rowdy Reed, who at the age of 23 made his major league visit to the ballpark today, first time ever. So his minor league career, in a nutshell, there. 37% caught stealing, by the way, from behind the plate. And when you have insight, you know how to handle your finances with confidence. PNC Bank for the achiever in you. I can't even imagine if my first big league game was the first one I ever saw. I mean, I'd be flipping out in the dugout. <laughs> well, look at all the people. Look at this roof. From San Jose de Acoa of the Dominican Republic. The scoreboard alone would freak me out. I mean, if you've never been to a big league ballpark and there's that huge screen out in the center, I mean, what's he? What's going through his mind right now? I mean, this is what you train all your life for, to be a major leaguer, yeah. right? Now you're here for the first time ever at a game. Crazy. Swing and a miss. Eight K's. Jimmy Nelson and maybe Rowdy glad he's not facing that dude right now. Warm up the pitcher. One curveball hit out of the ballpark by Neil Walker has been the scoring in this game. Both pitchers have been on point. I'm gonna show it to you right now the difference of the game by Statcast for it. The Fios by Verizon Statcast. Give me some numbers. Show me the digits. 106.4, 32 degrees, 415 feet. 
StatCast is brought to you from Fios by Verizon. Fios is not cable. We're wired differently. Go to getfios.com today. Neil Walker, bottom of the fourth. With that homer, Walker five for 13 career against Tanner. Broke up a personal 0 for 8 for the switch hitting infielder. Hitting 268 on the year left handed. Great pitch turned it over on him with the momentum Trey Turner little uh, Derek Jeter toss to first base right there sorry I, I know you don't like <laughs> that play but uh, that's what Trey did cutting way over you ever seen a shortstop make a play over here. Murph hit the brakes Trey flew right by and the backhand shovel. Does not remind me of Derek Jeter at all. Tighten it up over there. I think it does, and you won't admit it. Nope. You know who the, the owner of the Marlins? Is that what you're talking about? Well, I hear he doesn't have the big money in there, but he's one of them. <laughs> Twenty-five million dollars is big money. That's big money. We are. <laughs> but uh, it takes hundreds of millions to buy a baseball team. Yeah, I, I hope that whole thing goes great down there. I really I, do. Let's just put it this way I ain't buying a team anytime soon. <laughs> that one running inside. So from the class of 2005 from PNC Ryan Zimmerman Ryan Braun went back to back both have fashioned excellent careers whatever happened to Jeffrey Clement that's a good question witness the, relocation the catcher and the pitcher thing didn't go very well in that class. And uh, Ricardo Romero of Toronto. All the others, really good. Three one. It's on the edge. Painting corners. Jeffrey Clement had. A cup of coffee with the Mariners in 07. 203 at bats in 08 and had seven career home runs. Swing and a miss on a pitch down. Tanner Rowart dealing. Is Ryan Braun out of the game? Well, he didn't like the call third strike his first time up, and he didn't like strike two that time up on the 3 1 pitch, so he said the magic words to Mark Ripperger, and he wasn't having it. So a departed member of the draft class of 05. Hey, a one nothing game that's big. When, when the other team's third place hitter gets thrown out of a game this early, that's the one he didn't like. Three one. He's saying or that's the first time up. Excuse me, that's the called third first time up, and this is the swinging third strike second time up. And he didn't like the three one pitch that was called strike two either. But I mean that's a break for the Nats. Anytime you can get. Ryan Brown out of the game. It's a good thing for the opponent.
Way out of play. So just kind of a review I've said it before you could say that's horrible that's terrible. You missed it. But as soon as you personalize this stamp. And say you're horrible. And you make it personal. That's when you get run. Big hook. Tanner Roark's best curveball of the night. In terms of sheer drop. And the count 2 2 on Travis Shaw. Wow. Dealing. Six strikeouts, one pitch, and six runners stranded by the Nats. The difference in this game right now. Tanner Roark keeping it close in grand fashion. Dugout for an outfielder here in the fifth inning. Nets have the top of the order coming up. Hernan Perez will now be their number three hitter and left fielder, replacing the ejected Ryan Braun. Mark Ripperger in a hurry, ejecting their left fielder. Turner, Defoe, Murphy, top five. Walk, stolen base, stranded at third last time up. And the front door slider stays inside. Whoa. Fastball got away up and in, and Trey Turner has seen one by the hands and one up around the neck. No, intentional or not, that'll get a dugout's attention. Especially when you lost your leadoff hitter for so long. Dusty Baker probably not real happy. It, it, it's not whether it's on purpose or not. You'll hear guys in the dugout chirping, hey, this is the big leagues, throw strikes. And Edwin Jackson and all those guys know that Trey Turner is of utmost importance to this ball club winning a ring. Fouling one straight down, it got Trey somewhere. Terrence Long, when I was with the A's, whenever Jason Giambi got thrown at and it was close, we'd get on the top step and say, Don't mess with my ring and scream it at the opposing pitcher. You're messing with my ring. Meaning that's the meal ticket. And Trey Turner just fouled one off his ankle, it looked like.
Yeah, he's got pinpoint control tonight. Strikeout number nine out of 13 outs. Mercedes Benz on the pitch cast. Well, I mean, he throws two up and in and then does this. And you see Trey kind of buckle right there because of all the pitches. Look at the pitch cast. Season high in strikeouts, 11, done twice. Once Check against out. here against the Dodgers. Check this out. Look at the pitch cast. Every pitch to Trey, and then this for the last one. So you don't think those were by design? Maybe you know not up around the head. I think those would be called purpose pitches. I mean, how are you supposed to stick your teeth in there and foul that pitch off or hit it the right when three or four of those pitches almost hit you? Struck out 10 in his one complete game of the year against the Padres here back in mid June. So he struck out 10 twice, 11 twice. And well on the way, there's number 10. Yeah, three pitch C. This might have been the backdoor slider at 86. Now Daniel Murphy tries to solve him. His strikeout of Murphy with the bases loaded nobody out was the one that really got him going. In fact two were on at that time and he later hit Zimmerman to load him up. The runners were at first and third and we, he got Murphy. That gave some light at the end of the tunnel to the Brewer right hander to get out of that inning. Two and zero. Oh, that was close. Well, you got to think Jimmy Nelson's feeling real good about himself. After getting out of that bases loaded jam in the third, and now he's just painting, mixing it up nice, effectively wild, I guess you could say. And then, yeah. I guess old school guys would tell you if you got a hitter that's giving you all kinds of problems, get him off the plate and then ring him up with the slider down and away. And that was a big time example of it on Turner. Wilmer Defoe trying to get the inning to Ryan Zimmerman. Check out Daniel Murphy, July 26 against. Jimmy Nelson fastball in. He just turned and burned into his own bullpen. Looking for something in there right now. What inning was that, Cart? That was with one out in the seventh. And then the next inning, once the Nats got Nelson out of the game, they dropped a seven spot on Milwaukee. Without a homer in the following inning, just about everybody in the lineup had a hit in that inning as the Nats batted around. Went on to win eight to five. No decision for Gio and Nelson that night. The Nats got the win against Jacob Barnes out of the bullpen. But they got it turned around before this guy got out of the game. Checking in with Mark Ripberger on the location of that pitch. All the way across from one side to the other, some up and down to this AB. Yeah. 
And that's going to come around and strike out Murphy. He's now struck out 11 for the third time this year. Tanner Roark's night so far with some Geico highlights and show you all his punch outs. He's been on point. One curveball that left the yard, the difference in this game. That was a first strikeout to Ryan Braun. He didn't like that call. Here's the second strikeout, the 3 1 pitch he didn't like. Watch that run back fastball to Travis Shaw. That's the one he's been looking for all year. Maybe his best run back. Called third against a lefty all season. 15 minutes could save you 50% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. Tanner Rowark on a curveball, and that ball hooking into the left field corner from Domingo Santana. That will be Milwaukee's first hit since the Neil Walker first inning home run. Yeah, curveball off the end of the bat, but muscled it out there and placed it well. Howie Kendrick playing in left center field. No way to get that one down the line. So a leadoff double for the Brewers. That's how the bottom of the fifth gets underway. Steven Vogt, the catcher now. You know the Brewers just three and a half back. It's conceivable that the Nats could be coming back to Miller Park sometime this year and playing the Brewers in the playoffs. And while you're not going to sit here and go, oh, remember early September when you know Zach Davies and Jimmy Nelson had their way with us, that still plants a seed in your head as a hitter. You know, not that if they got 18 hits off them, they're coming in here all fat and happy in the playoffs, but you're going to remember this series. And what they did to you and how successful they were if you play them again in October and the Brewers play the Cubs seven more times. And next Friday, the weekend in Chicago and a four gamer here, the second last weekend of the season. Then the Brewers will close the season at St. Louis. And that could be meaningful for both. They've got a shot at the Cubs, that's for sure. And that ball into right field. Santana had to hold up to make sure it got through because it was a line drive. And the Brewers have first and third now, nobody out in the fifth. Steven Vogt now six for his last 13. Well, he's trying to pull the ball to advance the leadoff double by Domingo Santana, and he gets it through. Santana had to go back. Jason Worth got there quick, so runners at the corners, nobody out. Can keep this thing close. They've got Jimmy Nelson at 85 pitches through five innings. Takes a lot of pitches for 11 strikeouts and three walks. 
Defoe even with the bag at third. Zimmerman holding the runner and then stepping forward. And then uh, Turner Murphy double play depth. Jonathan VR strikeout looking first time. If you're Tanner, just avoid the big inning here. So what if they score another run? You're you're thinking, you're hoping that your offense is going to figure out Nelson or somebody down there in that bullpen. One one, and a bunt laid down. Play at third, and the runner got back. Ryan Zimmerman was ready to throw out Santana at home. Santana retreated, and the bases are loaded. Did Tanner almost wear this throw? I think it was the only play for Ryan. If he goes to first, th there's no way they're getting him. Yeah, Daniel Murphy was cruising over there, but his momentum going to the bag. And where'd the throw go? Oh, it did almost hit Tanner. I thought so. He threw that around Tanner Roark. Double, single, bunt single. RC of the batter. Bases loaded, nobody out. They give him a hit on that? Yes. Well, this is huge with the pitcher on deck. Get it out right here. Even a sack fly, doesn't matter. One one. Nelson's talking to his skipper right now in the dugout. I wonder if they're talking about a possible squeeze. He and Craig Council having a talk on the top step between pitches. 1 1 pitch fouled. One nothing game bottom five game two of a four game series. Get a key pitch or pitches coming right here. Fastball away tapper in front of the plate Lobotone steps on home and it's a two three double play huge. Very unusual double play and with the pitcher coming up there's a chance to keep it one nothing huge. I didn't think Jose was going to throw it. I mean, you're just happy with the force out at home. And RC is throwing stuff in the Brewers' dugout. I can hear it hitting all the way up here. So just a tapper in front of the plate. Roark expanded away because he chased the last slider. Lobatone steps on home, throws to first. Ryan with the stretch. I can't even say just with the dot their order because that was the furthest thing from my mind on how to turn a double play with the pitcher on deck. <laughs> I mean, when does a catcher ever have time to go get a ball, come back to the plate, and still throw? Crazy. Yeah, he barehanded it, hopped back on the plate, gathered himself, and threw a strike to Ryan. So the other runners moved up, second and third, two down. You can't believe it. Jimmy Nelson, five hits, two RBIs this year. All right, far enough. Yeah. Low in the zone, two and one.
Outside three and one. Got to take here if you're Nelson, don't you? I guess you don't have to. But. Runs it back. Count full. Yeah, take it all the way. He's going Joey Votto on the choke up. Or he was. Struck him out. Each pitcher has escaped a dangerous jam tonight. And in this case, Roark keeps it one nothing thanks to Lobatone as well. At the time, it was the longest game in Nationals history, June 24th, 2014. We've gone beyond 16 innings since, but in the top of the 16th, with not a whole lot of folks on hand in the AM, Ryan Zimmerman went deep and gave the Nats a win. He made an amazing catch. Yeah, Ryan Zimmerman, left fielder. Watch this. Denard Spann also made a spectacular play in that game, and the Nats. To use that baseball term outlasted the Milwaukee Brewers in a very long night that turned into a morning. I watched the DC Lexus dealers donate $250 to the Children's National Health System for the first 200 home runs hit by the Nats this year. Lexus experience amazing. I'm trying to watch the conversation between Ryan and Stephen Vogt and read the promo at the same time. You know Ryan wants to go deep after getting hit last time. And yeah, he's, he's been, been hit. hit. Trey's been knocked down a few times and Jimmy Nelson has pinpoint command so go figure. Zimmerman really hammers one into left. That had to feel pretty good. And maybe if you hit one like that you don't feel it at all on the sweet spot. Well, he's thinking I want to elevate this and tie the game. He'll take the base hit. Not waiting around. Nelson's throwing strikes, right? There's nothing to wait for right now if you're a Nats hitter. So ambush single, leadoff man on, one nothing game, game on. Nats first base hit since Howie Kendrick's leadoff single in the second. Been a night of frustration for a lot of hitters. Fastball up. Nelson approaching 90 pitches here in the top of the sixth. How about Tanner Roark getting out of that jam? Great that, stuff. That was money. Nets box. First inning Murphy two out single. Second inning the aforementioned Hendrick single when he stole second. Went to third on a throwing error and that's couldn't bring him in. Then the two walk hit by pitch third inning three stranded. 
And that was it until a moment ago when Ryan rocked that ball into left. Nelson, 28 years of age, 31 and 44 career. Fifth in the league in strikeouts this season, came in with 181. He's at 192 now. Kendrick hits it hard, but it's right at Sogard for the 4 6 3 double play. Two extremely hard hit balls this inning. I thought for a second Sogard took too much time. Ball's hit hard, so you have time as a second baseman based on the speed of the ball, but maybe he had trouble getting it out. Let's see. The feed was high. Yeah, he had trouble on the exchange. Jason Worth, two strikeouts. Slider misses low. Well, if the Nats don't extend him here, he could get through seven. He threw 118 pitches in his complete game win against the Padres here June 18. Nothing higher than 108 other than that game. One and two. Worth got a fastball and that got Mark Ripperger. Hmm. Bare arm maybe. Right for him, I believe. Nats pass is back for the final month of the regular season, offering fans all 13 September home games for just 65 bucks. Enjoy big matchups against the Phillies, Braves, Dodgers coming to town, Pirates as well. Visit nationals.com slash Nats pass today. One and two to Worth, and Jason pops this one up. Approaching the on deck circle vote. A step onto the circle after he caught it, and the Nats are gone in the top of the sixth. You want to know how to get out of a bases loaded jam? We're going to show you right here. So the double play was huge. Jose Lobaton with the quick feet got back, touched home, got rid of it quick, a strike to Ryan Zimmerman, and then strike three to Jimmy Nelson. 
So nicely done, Tanner Roark. He's been on point all night. Both of these pitchers are locking horns. It's been a pitcher's duel, to say the least, here in Milwaukee. Yeah, double, single, single. So here we go, 71 pitches, 47 strikes for Tanner. Sogard, Walker, and Perez for the Brew Crew, bottom six. That is a big curveball for a strike. Sogard has struck out looking and bounced out Zimmerman to Roark. Target away. He rolls over the grounder. It gets by the pitcher. Murphy, though, time. Quick exchange for the out. Brewers box. One out, first inning. Neil Walker batting left handed. A long home run into the second level and right. And then since then, the Santana double, vote single, VR bunt single last inning, and Lobatone took care of that. So limited offensive opportunities tonight. Each team has had one golden opportunity to score more than one run. Brewers have left just two runners. The Nats have stranded six, and all of those came in the first three innings. Tanner due to bat third and the seventh. Trying to make it through six innings for the 17th time this year. And that looked like a slider that got Neil Walker on the leg. Very interesting sequence there. That was the last pitch Jose Lobaton put down. He went fastball in, fastball away, curveball to the slider. And Tanner shook yes on the slider and just pulled it. Roark's reaction was one of semi disgusted himself for losing the hitter. So, one on one out. Instead of Ryan Braun, it's Hernan Perez here. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Perez was all over the joint last night. Tagged on that short fly ball, stole the base, hustling all over, diving everywhere. Talked to Craig Council about him last night or today during batting practice. And I said, does he play like that every night? He said, absolutely. No matter where I put him, the guy loves to play baseball. 26 years of age from Venezuela. I think we mentioned this last night. Two years ago, June, a waiver pickup of the Tigers, who gave him 33 at bats that year and waived him June 2nd. And the Brewers scooped him right up. Hit 272 here in 123 games last year. Stole 34 bases. Yeah, first thing his manager said, he's going to make a great manager someday if he wants to. Smart knows the game. 1-1. One, one. Pardon me, 1-2 one now. Magic number is 14. The Marlins are reeling. They got swept by the Nats, and they've lost the first couple this weekend to the Phillies at home. So their losing streak is at five. Magic number went down for the Nats last night despite the loss and 
Perez will walk away. Strikeout victim number eight for Tanner. Nissan on the pitch cast will show you the run back two seamer, which has been bueno all night. They start that thing off the plate, running it back. Got a good feel for it. Nicely done. Marlin six back in the wild card. Arizona's at Colorado this weekend. And the Diamondbacks have won seven straight. Travis Shaw for two, fly ball to center, and a called third strike. Another hot team over the American League, Cleveland, won their eighth in a row today. First of two at Detroit, and they're winning 10 to nothing late in the nightcap. Well, I don't know what their broadcaster is doing here, but he's down next door to us. Gary Doyle. He's right down. He's broadcasting right next to us. Shouldn't he be in Cleveland right now doing the 10 nothing game? There is he. There he is. Mr. Euchre. <laughs> he's the best. Apparently, he's the Brewers broadcaster. Who knew? I mean, Bob Uecker's getting up there pretty soon in Vin Scully territory in terms of longevity. I think you told me yesterday 62 years. Now. He's a beauty. One and two. I mean, has there been a more famous broadcaster? From his regular appearances on Johnny Carson to all the. Was it Bud Light or Miller Light commercials? Oh, are you kidding? In Milwaukee? Yeah, Miller Light. My <laughs> bad. I mean, to Mr. Belvedere, I mean. <laughs> He's he's had the dream life for what what did he get 200 as a catcher? Maybe it's 62 years in baseball now not all of that as a Brewers broadcaster but playing career and all that. And uh, Bob said yeah they need to add some numbers onto that sign up there in right field. Over a hundred times on the Tonight Show. Yeah. Runner on the move and a grounder. I still remember the skit with Johnny Carson where he was the amazing Karnak and he had the envelope to his head and he said, Catch 22. And he opened the envelope and said, What does Bob Euchre do with 100 pitches? Yeah. I mean, you can just. Almost hear him just by watching him do that. <laughs> Three two runner moving again and a ball driven to left. Howie Kendrick is tracking it on the track and a little jump at the end. Brewers strand their third runner. Take that Uke. Still the one nothing. <laughs>
didn't know this was going to happen. An 11 game winner against a 10 game winner right now the slight edge to the guy with 10 wins. Nelson's been outstanding 10 Roark has been great and it's going to be a shame for one of them to either get a no decision or a loss tonight. Well second here the game goes 4 15 and a home run you're thinking oh balls flying tonight it's going to be a slugfest but both pitchers on point Tanner Roark's been dotting his spots. You know maybe he stays in the game here Dusty Baker trying to get him a win but I don't know maybe we all change seats right now because so far Jimmy Nelson has been absolutely dealing. He'll make it to 100 pitches in this inning. Bottom three in the order. Taylor Lobatone then the pitcher spot. And Taylor on what's usually a base hit taken away because they're in the shift and the second baseman Sogard was playing right behind the bag. Potomac Nationals accepting deposits for full and half season ticket plans for next year. Lock in your pricing. Give them a call or log on. So the lefty is Josh Hader, Jeremy Jeffress, the righty. Tanner Roark is on deck right now. Right side of Tapper. Walker to Nelson. And here comes Tanner Roark to bat. In six innings, he's thrown 89 pitches, 58 strikes. I mean, there's no reason to take him out. It's a one nothing game. He's absolutely dealing right now. If his team can figure out Jimmy Nelson or whomever in the eighth, he's got a chance to win. So, you know, in my mind, why would you bring in somebody that you don't know what you're getting from? When you know what you're getting from Tanner tonight, that's yeah. always the mystery for a manager. When you bring in whoever out of the bullpen, what are you getting out of him? You know what you got on the mound right now, and he's dealing. Out to short. Arcia and Jimmy Nelson may not be done for the night.
13 of the last 14 Washington hitters have been retired. Tanner Roark needs to keep being brilliant. Takes on Domingo Santana here. First pitch swinging, bottom of the seventh underway. Santana's double got that madness started in the fifth inning, but Milwaukee not able to score. Fastball up, bang. And by the way, that was a five pitch seventh inning for Jimmy Nelson, who's at 100. Could be around for a while. Got him. Beauty. Looked just like the fastball and the changeup for strikeout number nine. Well, that's the best Tanner Roark's pitched all year. I mean, he's absolutely filthy tonight. Everything out in front, on top, bottom of the zone, he's hitting spots. Jose Lobatone's barely moved his glove all night long. Whatever finger he's putting down, Tanner Roark's executing. Tanner nine strikeouts in six innings against the Mets last time out didn't walk a batter. Yeah, Second half indeed well, for the man from Illinois. What's Dusty always say it's not how you start it's how you finish. I mean that's that swing back fastball up a bit and it handcuffed Stephen Vogt. Nasty in the dirt. Lobatone smothers it. Strikeout number 10. Tanner Roark fanned 11 D backs in Phoenix July 22nd. Curveball in the dirt. Good block to keep it right in front. Yeah, if this stays 1 0, we're. I mean, we're changing seats. We might have to change clothes. We gotta figure something out, don't we? Tanner Roark, fourth career, 10 strikeout game. Here's Jonathan VR. Fourth career 10K game for Tanner. Ten or more. So Lee's working. Roark still two pitches away from 100. Tanner's gone seven six times this year, most recently against the Angels, August 16th. That was a 3 2 loss. And he gave up three runs on four hits. A slippage right there, get some rosin. Scott, both pitchers have a beautiful rhythm going tonight. It'd be interesting if the inning came to an end on this pitch. They'd each be at 100. A little bit outside and 2 2. Good job of leveling off by VR and going the other way. His second base hit. Brewers with a runner in scoring position, two outs. A 16 double of the year, fastball away, just dropped the barrel on it. Jose Lobaton was set up down and in for that comeback fastball, just ran out over. 
So do you walk him right here? Force their hand? Yeah, see what you <laughs> Absolutely. Pitcher is yeah. on deck. And, and if you want to pinch hit for him, do it. You, you have to walk him. That is Tanner Roark's first walk of the night. He's going back to the dugout. Good and way to is, get him out of the game. This is exactly what Dusty Baker wanted. Force Craig Council's hand. You keeping him in the game, he's dealing. Or I'll take my chances with the pinch hitter and I'll take my chances with the Brewers bullpen. Great strategy. The game within the game on display right there. And Dusty Baker made the right move. Regardless of how this turns out, the point of walking Arcia was to make Council make a decision on a starting pitcher who's been money all night long. It's the salty veteran manager, Dusty Baker, with I think the absolute correct move here, regardless if another run scores or not. You had to do that. You had to get Nelson out of the game if you're going to win. Jesus Aguilar will be the pinch hitter. Here comes the Mike Maddox pinch hitter scatter report. The rhythm thing of the game is getting disrupted here, though. Yeah. I mean, Aguilar's emergence from the dugout took a long, long time. He was two for four with a couple of RBIs here last night. He's never faced Tanner Roark. I would have been tempted to leave my starter. I'm just saying. Not an easy decision for Craig Council, but I mean, that's no normal lineup that Jimmy Nelson just cut through tonight. Yeah, now his bullpen's going to have to do it for a couple of innings. Aguilar, 14 homers, 46 RBIs. 14 for 48 as a pinch hitter with three homers, 10 batted in. Oh, thrilled him. Crowd booing. I'm sure Tanner planned that. Well, Ryan Zimmerman got hit. Trey Turner got knocked out. I mean, in a one-run game, is that how you get back at him? I don't think so. That would have been second and third. Two outs if it gets by. Matt Albers joins Sammy. And the fastball misses blown away. So we saw Ichiro. The Nats have Adam Lind. And these guys have Aguilar, maybe the three best pinch hitters in all of baseball this year. Ichiro. That last count had 23 pinch hits. This guy has 14. Lynn has 14. Strike call, 1-1. One, one. This feels like a playoff game. Yeah. Aguilar didn't like it. Jose pulled it up a little bit to bring it in the zone and make it more attractive. Tanner's trying to slow the game down. I think he's on fumes right now. Good stop by Jose right here. Trying to get one more out. We haven't seen Pat Valaika of Colorado much, but there they are, three of the top four we've seen this week. Two one. And a high fly ball, deep center. Taylor 
is there. <laughs> 395 feet away. But he got him. And a great evening for Tanner Rohr comes to a loud end, you would think, after seven outstanding innings. of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Beautiful Miller Park what a Friday night inside this yard. Time for the unlimited baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile Justin Verlander about a minute before midnight traded to Houston last night. He is eligible for postseason. Javi Baez replacing Addison Russell lately and Russell out for a while. Justin Upton is an angel. Brandon Phillips is an angel. So they've got Phillips Upton Trout and Pujols as their first four hitters in that lineup. They're all in. Here's Josh Hader. 24th appearance. Only two Nats have ever faced him. Bryce Harper and Howie Kendrick and Trey Turner trying to get something ignited here in the top of the eighth. Yeah, fastball slider. You saw the average against. He is stingy. And you see the delivery. It's funky. So 41 strikeouts and 31 a third. 20 walks. The opponents in just 144 against the Brewers lefty. Swing, a foul tip, and a strikeout. He went right after Trey Turner. There's a whole lot going on there. That that does not look like a comfy at bat. Turns his back to you, and then throws 97 with all kinds of stuff going on. Dirty. Wilmer Defoe. 0 for 2 with a walk. Since the 1st of July. From April and May to June and July and August, Wilmer, Wilmer Defoe made the most dramatic turnaround in batting average of any hitter in baseball. 0 2 now. Started playing. Getting quality time. Taking advantage of opportunity on a first place club. Hader Low, just 23 years of age from Millersville, Maryland. Originally drafted by the Orioles. 
out of Old Mill High School. Traded to Houston and then from Houston to here in the Carlos Gomez deal. One two pitch. Defoe high in the air foul and out of play. Ball quite a bit of carry right to the first row of that second deck in the corner. Well haters supplying the power here. Upstairs. 13 strikeouts by the Milwaukee staff tonight. I mean, it looks like a left handed Hanson brother that just comes at you with some serious noise. So, all kinds of funk to his delivery, and then it's hard, it looks like it's hard to pick up the release point. Here it is. Watch, turns it back. Where's it going to come out of? So, a three quarter release to what looked like a rising fastball there. This might be one of the the most electric guys I've seen out of a bullpen all year. 43 strikeouts now in 32 innings. Murphy a swing and a miss. I mean this is impressive. Daniel Murphy seldom ever strikes out three times in a game. Nelson got him twice. This crowd's going to Stand up like it's the ninth inning. They're in a pennant race. It's a huge game for the Brewers. Strikes out the side. Turner, Defoe, Murphy all swinging. And this one to the bottom of the eighth, one nothing. Asset. Brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. For over 50 years, serving the military and their families, federally insured by NCUA. The historic Third Ward downtown, great entertainment, dining area here in Milwaukee, home to the public market. And a great stop. And right now it's time for AARP's player profile, profile getting to know. Ryan Madsen back with the ball club. He's been on a couple of championship teams, Phillies Royals. 86 career saves and a guy with proven postseason pedigree. 42 career postseason games. There's Ryan. Good to see him back. Here we go. Bottom eight, Sammy Solis to Eric Sogard. First pitch, breaking ball, the curve of beauty. 22nd appearance for Sammy. 18 Ks and right at 18 innings. 
So Tanner Roark goes seven. Five hits, one run, the Walker Homer. One walk, intentional, 10 strikeouts for the fourth time in his career, 105 pitches, 69 strikes. Dealing. Absolutely dealing. You know, maybe one of the best games I've seen him pitch in two years. Sammy Solis comes out and gets his inning off to a great start. Hey, coming in throwing strikes a three pitch see ya. this one. Framed up big time by Jose Lobatone on the black good pitch Sogard Didn't like it one out. Neil Walker. One for four career with a run batted in against the Nets. The lefty so. Walker turns around to the right side where this year he's hit well with Milwaukee 600 three for five small sample size but well done and Tanner went seven shutout against the Giants on May 29th with six strikeouts but I think tonight was more impressive one mistake the guy you're looking at. Their closer, Corey Knable, in August, 13 for 13 in saves. Sean Doolittle in August, 9 for 9. Fernando Rodney had a big month for Arizona. But he was 11 out of 12. And it's three and one now to Neil Walker. Zimmerman, Kendrick, and Worth do up in the ninth. Jammed in on a play right side. Byron Kerr's in the studio tonight with Ray Knight. It's our Nats Extra post game show when this one's over. Presented by Who But WB Mason. Brandon Kinsler for the Nets. And Walker kind of a half swing to stay alive, but he couldn't get it out of play. Zimmerman runs it down, two outs. Max effort. Tomorrow, Scherzer looking for number 14. Still leads everybody in strikeouts. He's already beaten the Brewers once this year. And against Milwaukee, career two and two. It'll be his seventh start against him. Ricky Brandon Woodruff for Milwaukee. 6.30 Nats extra, mass and two to get you going tomorrow night. Well done by Sammy Solis. Kinsler on to face Perez. Two outs, bottom eight. A lot to be decided yet here.
Kind of a step back. Old school ball game a one nothing pitchers duel bullpens working now and working well in the bottom of the eighth inning. So Brandon Kinsler for the Nats it'll be his 15th appearance 13 hits in 14 innings gets ground balls only eight strikeouts Nats ERA 3.21 and two seam fastball you know about all the sink on it slider going the other way occasional change up from Brandon. His ground ball percentage with a couple of teams this year 58 percent right around 58 percent last year it was 62. Left fielder Erdon Perez seeing Kinsler for the first time. Fastball tails in. On fan graphs right now, a brewer from 2009 to 2015 is Brandon Kinsler. So a long time in this organization. Did not have one save during that time. Most games, 71 and 13, 64 the next year. So he was busy setting things up, and that's outside. Two and one. Trying to end this eighth inning because there's a classic type ninth inning waiting. A good closer and a four five six coming up to face him. Two two up the middle, just enough to get it through. And there's a running threat at first base with two down. Perez 12 steals and 15 attempts. Big lead by Perez at first. He started, took about three steps and stopped. That was just a fake break. I don't think he was still putting his wrist guard on while he was faking. I actually think that's a play that's not used enough at the major league level. The fake break at first with the base dealer. That can buy your hitter a ball. Whether the pitcher rushes it to the plate or the catcher pops up and blocks the umpire's view. There's a lot of good things that can happen for younger players just by faking a steal. A catcher pops up to throw you out. The ump doesn't get a look at it. You got 1 0 on your hitter. Two and one though. Pitcher hears everybody yell runner and maybe he panics and throws a ball. Nobody ever does it though. The only time you see guys fake break is when they're thinking about stealing they don't get a jump and they stop. But I'm talking about I'm not stealing here I'm taking two hard steps. And then you have to be ready to get back to the bag for the snap throw but it's a, it's a good play that nobody ever uses. With the shift on that ball's well hit center Taylor to the wall just enough room to keep it one nothing. <laughs> This has been a great game. I mean, a really, 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 really good game. My goodness. So you saw Zimmerman. There's Howie. Worth coming. 
and so is Corey Knable, their good closer. Three zero Washington Zimmerman Kendrick Worth last night Corey Canable got his thirty first save of the year on eight pitches to Lind Rendon and Weeders grounder foul out line drive to the outfield to end the game so a different set of hitters tonight and it should be quite a matchup here in the ninth. A 15 and a third innings pitched in August he was one and zero with the 0 ERA 13 for 13 in saves in the month. Gave up just nine hits all month. So what's that mean? He's due. Well, this guy's 25 years of age. Ryan Zimmerman hasn't faced him before. Howie Kendrick is 0 for 1 against him. Jason Worth, one at bat, a walk. That little head dip herky jerky thing going. 98 for a strike. I'll tell you what, based on two days, I like the Brewers rotation better than the Cubs, and I like the back end of the Brewers bullpen better than the Cubs. And I like the Cubs lineup better. So for whatever that's worth. And Milwaukee trying to post a win. St. Louis trails early at San Francisco. They're two and a half up on them for the wild card. In pursuit of Colorado. And now it's one and two to Ryan Zimmer. This is where he's going to do to you. Check out the pad. Jason Worth, Rick Shue. I think with the closers that have great stuff that are locked in the best approach is ambush first pitch and hope he makes a mistake. That first pitch to Ryan was paint. I'm just saying that, that might be the only pitch you get the whole that bat. Curveball was up but then it went down one out. 15 K's by the Milwaukee staff. Well he's gearing up for 98 but this was there. He was just out in front. It was a lot slower at 82. Acted more like a changeup than anything. It's a stat we don't see a whole lot. The strikeout leaders among relievers. Howie Kendrick 0 for 1 against him with a strikeout, and the curve is in there. It's 
98 right over the top. <laughs> just look at it from our booth. I mean, he's not short. 6'4, 220, they list him. Howie Kendrick late. 40,000 and 44 here tonight. Brewers trying to win their 12th out of their last 17. Before you go back to that bases loaded situation the Nats had in the third. Mm. It was huge. Murph had first and third nobody out. Rare strikeout for Murph. Then Zim got hit. And Jimmy Nelson struck out Howie Kendrick and Jason Worth. In a one nothing game you kind of had a feeling that was going to be huge. Fastball. Howie just a little bit late for that one. Domingo Santana playing well over toward the line. I mean, they're outfield. Jonathan VR, look where he is in center. My goodness. I mean, a ball over shortstops, two or three bags. He's playing no doubles like a first baseman. Keon Broxton. They're all moving him back now. Yeah, Broxton's in center now. He of the game saving catch two days ago here. Swing and a miss, two down. Nasty. Well, that's where if you're Jason Worth, you can hit a lot of people's day with one swing. One home run under his belt since he's been back. Just missed the second off the top of the wall at Nats Park. So here we go. Get you a good one and catch it out front. We're with you. Not giving up. 2 0. Wow. You throw 98 99, drop a 2 0 hammer on me for strike one. I'm, my head's spinning right now if I'm in the box. Kidding me? You throw 100, you did that for a strike? It came down so much it was almost a strike. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe just a touch high. But you just a lot of times umps get caught, caught up in the moment with the crowd and give Mark Ripperger credit for not doing that right there. Three two Nats need a base runner Taylor on deck actually Lind and Jason Worth will work the walk. Hold on. Former Brewer Adam Lind, one of the best pinch hitters in baseball. Stay tuned. Lind 0 for 1 against Knebel. And a nervous murmur throughout the crowd. Surprised he didn't throw another 99 mile an hour fastball there. Oh, yeah. 
Tried to trick Jason Worth, and now he got the tie run on first. And Jason Worth, you're looking for one of those curves in the dirt. Keeping the pitch, the fastball away from the power lefty. It's a good rip. Situation like this the other day, dramatic in this ballpark. Broxton in center field. And Lind on a pitch up will strike out. Their bullpen struck out the side in both innings. It worked tonight. Hater what. and Knable untouchable. Excuse me, Carb. I'll tell you what. Couldn't hear you over the crowd. A one nothing loss. But the Nats need more games like this to get ready for October baseball. Even though they lost, this is a good night for them because this is what it's going to be like in about a month. When hits and runs are hard to get. How about Milwaukee? 17 strikeouts. 